Welcome back guys. It took us a little bit longer to get that game set up than we expected. Sorry about that. We are going to be going into... What map was this, uh, Sluggy? Um, I'm not sure actually. Abyssal it's Reef. Abyssal, Reef. Abyssal yeah. Reef. Awesome. And who's playing stuff? We have Fizerg against... Um, give me a sec. Okay, we're still getting that information, guys. Love having our admin on the cast. I never thought that would work. That was awesome. <laughs> um, okay, but uh, Sluggy, let's tell the audience a little bit about you, um, your history as a, a StarCraft commentator, because you are definitely dropping some knowledge mountains that game one. So why should everyone respect what you have to say and bow before the slug? Well, um, I guess the only respect why people should have for me is that I've been watching a lot of uh, esports and I really like starcraft uh mm -hmm. just like a lot of people here but i like really delving into the strategy while mm -hmm. i'm not the greatest mechanical player uh mm -hmm. in terms of mechanics mm -hmm. but i am quite familiar with the strategies and that might provide to be a valuable insight uh not for everyone but for those of you who are watching mm -hmm. um and yeah these could be the assets that i could provide for this stream yeah well Abyssal Reef, definitely more of a macro map, but we're still going to be looking at ZVZ. How does that affect the map? It, normally, I would say that in a macro map uh, such as Acolyte, it would be safer for the Zerg side to, uh, for both Zerg sides to macro up. But uh, this map, the third, is a little bit exposed, although they are closer in proximity. So mm -hmm. we might still be able to see the same kind of results. And moreover, the mm -hmm. natural ramp is split into two different parts. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing to be wary about. It's got a wide opening to attack mm -hmm. the nat uh, natural. Yeah, and you can't really def zone as easily with Baneling. So if Varzer was to try to go for something like he did before, he'd have to be defending two entry points instead of just the one. Right. But it, if it does go into the mid game, then mm -hmm. it'll be quite exciting to see if they will go to high mm -hmm. tech or not. Because those five bases cluster around could be very uh, easy and encouraging for a late game. Yeah, I know before you had mentioned that um, Vipers were really getting popular in this matchup. Is that right? Uh, that's right. I've seen from the foreign pro players mm -hmm. that Viper has been extensively utilized compared to how the Koreans play it out in pro tournaments. And that was really exciting to watch. Vipers abducting Vipers. That can only happen in a ZVZ between a foreigners game. Yeah. <laughs> really? You don't you think you'd see sure. that in Korea? That is almost never seen. Uh, Korean players, the thing about them is that they prefer to finish the game at Roach versus Roach's stage. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty good at that, but unfortunately it rarely goes to extensive high pump stage. I got you, man. Well, I think we should probably hop right into this game because a little bit of early shenanigans have been happening, man. This, mm, that's uh, right. Yeah, do you want to... Uh, well, let's go ahead and introduce the players here on the bottom right hand side of uh, Abyssal Reef playing for Nocturnal Gamers in the green Zerg trunks. He is Geedon! I'm not sure he knows what's coming for him. Spawn in the top left. It's the continuing player from the last game. It's Psionic Aftermath Fire Zerg. All right, so you want to catch the audience up on what we just saw? Okay, so it's a very fast pool. Uh, I think it's a 12 pool. And mm -hmm. he doesn't care. He just sends those links straight up in a straight line. Now, Keaton's uh, overlords have spotted this, so he does know. But unfortunately, there's not much larvae to be uh, spent into making links. Typically, whenever I do this particular build, uh, players will pull drones down the ramp and try to engage that, but they wait for the uh, for me to bruise their hatchery quite a bit. Instead, we see Gideon, um starting to make a spine crawler. This will be interesting because uh, Firezerk actually went for a much faster gas and then pulled off. Right. So there's still no Baneling Nest or anything. So this may not be the best choice. Now what's going to be interesting is that instead of trying to defend this, mm -hmm. he has made a spine crawler. Mm -hmm. Now with the he doesn't know that if when the speedling is gonna be done. So at this point it's just going to be a light harass and mm -hmm. it's going to retreat. Mm -hmm. And as this it, you as, as you see, the drone count is actually higher for Gideon. So mm -hmm. it seems that it's curious to see what the next step of Fire Zerg is going to be. 
I've actually seen Sue use a build similar to this, really the goal being to reset the fast hatch and get your hatchery up and get a larva advantage, and then go right. into more early game fresh or perhaps a roach one or something like that. So we'll see where he goes. Good uh, Ling surround here with the metabolic boost. He is only on done the for fire, Zerg. That is a huge advantage right now. And these Lings are storming in. There's still like 20 seconds to go on the uh, Ling speed for Gideon. Yeah, man, this is getting epic. And here we go. Fires are coming in here. Does he go up the ramp? Yes, he is choosing to go straight for the throat here. Does see the spine caller choosing to engage? Very the nice Sim City. Very nice Sim City. And now choosing to go back and taking out that uh, that expansion. Yet again, he could go home after this. Now, it seems that Eden has made more drones. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, that hatch is going to be canceled. Mm -hmm. The fires are playing some very brilliant mind games here. Yeah, and uh, ooh, those bailing hits were scary. Um, but now he can kill off this one bailing. Maybe, maybe it's half HP. He's got to kill off very, very carefully. All right. I'm not sure if this is a good decision. He, Gideon doesn't need to establish map control. Oh my goodness, that was a beautiful main hit. That was more mains on the way. <gasps> Fires are getting a little bit sloppy. Hit. Oh my. Yeah, that is epic. Now man. the game yeah. has changed. So many lings has been lost. Uh, that's like what? Uh, 23 lings lost on Fire Zerg's side. That 42 seems... lings. 21 yeah. on Gideon's side. Um, and now Gideon moving on to his opponent's side of the map and trying to put some pressure here. But Queen's doing a fairly good job holding this ramp. The wall. This is what I meant well. when I was talking about it could be different, even if it was a macro match. As you can see, there are two different entryways into the natural, and immediately mm -hmm. he blocks it off with a bailing nest and an evolution chamber. Yeah, and we've got a little bit of a push in here. It does manage to oh, get no, up the links the wall. do get in. That's very bad. He sees that there's no possibility of lair, so he doesn't have to worry about that for now. Ooh, Banelings going off on that completing building, which means no armor reduction. Does kill off one of the Banelings and another Banelings trying to swing in here. He's trying to move those Banelings into the mineral line. Ooh, ooh really good splits there by Firezark and the Banelings. Oh, that is a good split. Oh my goodness. But the Lings uh, dying to those Banelings, I mean, it's better than dying to uh, losing drones, but still, no. Uh, both drones, Fire Zerg has actually caught up. It's 22 compared to, oh, it's actually 25 compared to 19. Mm -hmm. But yeah. instead of going full macro, it seems that both players want to go for a full blown Ling Bane match. And actually, he's, Fire Zerg is making use of that evolution chamber by getting a plus one on the immediate attack. Fire Zerg has actually had a huge larva advantage for most of this game, and now he's converted that into an economic advantage. So Gideon has to make something happen. That's right. Uh, Gideon hasn't been uh, getting economically, uh, hasn't been getting good income right mm -hmm. now. And that's because Fire Zerg has played his game, early game, with a brilliant mind game. Mm -hmm. And that was good enough to, even if there were big losses on the main hits. Right. Um, so we got Fire Zerg swinging in here now, trying to get some damage done to the wings before the wings do complete. But more reinforcements by Gideon does force Firezerg back to the defense of his spine crawler. What do you think uh, of taking this particular base here, Sluggy? I think this base is pretty good, but mainly I think it was done out of choice. Uh, I mean, forcefully, because the Sim City of failing this. Oh my goodness, this spine crawler is the MVP right there. It's defending all these mainlings. Yeah, it, it's getting pretty epic. The lings, however, of Gita now getting up into the main, but actually not getting anything. Bailing's gonna swing in there. Managed to kill those off, but kills off the spine crawler as well. And now some lings are in the natural of fires are definitely hitting with this multi-prong of harassment sluggy. Yeah, it seems that Fire Zerg has grown up a bit, and that was ultimately his downfall. We're not actually sure if he's able to protect this third hatch, because reinforcements are on the way. Yeah, he's still got a drone advantage, though, so if he can manage to kill all of this off, he's got a huge amount of Banelings morphing, and he is putting all of his technology, all of his gas, into the Banelings, and if he can manage to secure a third pace, this is yet more larva, and this will give him the opportunity to possibly win this game. Buddy. That's right. While well, Fire Zerg does have the advantage by default, nobody's sure how this matchup is going to be played out just yet. We'll have to see how good these Baneling detonations are. Indeed, man. Getting getting in here in the next time, some of these Banelings are trying to get up at... Oh! oh my goodness, that was a brilliant usage of the narrow choke. Yeah, man, that is epic, but Fire Zerg still got his Banelings 
pretty uh that is pretty a huge up. amount of bailings let's see how yes. the micro plays out really good positioning here by one Eden by one using picking that it up yes using if the bailings don't up. have any links to protect them then it's going to be very useless and the spy crawler has denied that possibility of getting any further yeah, and these, these Banes taking a lot of damage, but finally managed to kill me off that queen. Right now, they're just like stray dogs. They don't really have a role, but these Lings have came back. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, uh, I think the Bane Lings are mostly like preemptive. Like, he cannot pull his own Lings down here. Right, it's an intense and a very chaotic situation for both players. So, mm -hmm. uh, these Bane Lings were brought in, but it just seems that the Larva count is just crazy. And that drone advantage, it's transforming mm -hmm. into more Lings. Fires are showing himself to be a ZVZ expert, narrowly that's it. winning GG. by a narrow margin each time, but definitely convincing it by the end of it. Yeah, that was a pretty good game. That was uh, very entertaining. Yeah, yeah, it was, man. So what, what, what happened there? Like, what is it that, for sure, for certain, like, change? Like, where, where, where did things change? Where did things go from fires are? You know, his all in to like. Being well, it'll be a difficult question to just put point to one source and say okay. that's why he lost. Mm -hmm. I think there were definitely a lot of times where the game shifted back and forth. The advantages were there uh, on both sides at one point of the game. But ultimately, I think Firezerg's macro approach combined with his superior production, ultimately, much like the first game, has allowed him to bring around the game and secure a victory. Yes, indeed, man. Well, guys, if you want to help support these players, whoever gets through in this particular uh, game will be moving on to the round robin. Definitely uh, check out uh, um, the Matcherino page. You can actually get free beef jerky just like this. Mmm, jerky. You can get uh, free beef jerky just by donating $10. You'll get a... How many ounces is this? This one's 3.25. I assume they all are. But anyways, we'll send it to you. Just got to donate $10. It goes to support the event. Thanks to our sponsors, Crave Jerky. But we're going to be going to set these games up. So check out a word from our sponsors. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 